In this video, I'd like to talk about matrix equations. So, given a matrix A and a vector x, we have to define what it means to multiply the matrix A to the vector x. So the definition, we take the linear combinations of the columns of the matrix A with the entries of the column vector x as their weight. What I mean is this, the scalar x1 times the column 1, 2 and the scalar x2 times the column 3, 4. We can do this for any size matrices as long as the number of columns is equal to the number of rows of the vector. So something like this. Another thing to note is that the size of the columns does not really matter. So we can do a matrix multiplication of something like this. This would be a 2 by 4 matrix. And this would be a 4 by 1 matrix or a column vector. As long as this number and this number matches up, then we can consider their product, which would be something like this, a linear combination of the columns of the matrix. The point of introducing matrix equations is to reframe the linear system of equations as a matrix equation problem. Given this linear system of equations, we can rewrite it as, first of all, a vector equation. And now we can rewrite this as a matrix equation. So finding a solution to this linear system of equations becomes a problem of asking whether this constant vector is in the span of the columns of this matrix. So we can just study this matrix to see if there is a solution. And so this is the heart of linear algebra, studying this matrix equation where A is a matrix and X and B are vectors. What we are interested is in whether this matrix equation has a solution or not. And so we introduce our first theorem. Let A be an M by N matrix. When we say M by N, we mean m rows and n columns. Then the following statements are logically equivalent. That means that the following statements are going to be all true or all false for a particular matrix A. Statement A, for each B in Rm, the equation Ax equals B has a solution. Here Rm means m-dimensional Euclidean space. So R1 would be just the number line, the real number line. R2 would be the plane, two-dimensional plane. Or, and R3 is the three-dimensional space that could go in X, Y, or Z. Now you can have R4, which would just be represented by four real numbers. It's a little bit hard to visualize what R4 would be. Statement B, each vector B and Rm is a linear combination of the columns of A. Statement C, the columns of A span Rm. And statement D, A has a pivot position in each row. For a given A, these statements are all simultaneously true or they're all simultaneously false. Let's do a quick example illustrating some of the statements of the theorem. So let's consider this example given this matrix A and some vector b, is there always a solution to ax equals b? Well, we can form the augmented matrix and row reduce, but we can use one of our theorems. Namely, if we row reduce a, then we can figure out where the pivot positions are, and if there is not a pivot position in every single row, then there could be examples of vectors b where a solution does not exist. In order to find the pivot positions, we need to row reduce to at least echelon form. We can multiply the first row by 4 and add it into the second row, and we can multiply the first row by 3 and add it into the third row. And this will give us this matrix. With enough practice, you will also be able to magically just compute the rows in an instant like me. In the next step, let's divide everything by 2 in the second row. And so we will get something like this. Now, since these two rows are the same, we can just multiply by negative 1 and add it in, and we will get, at this point, we can locate our pivot entries here, here, 
but there will not be a pivot entry on the third row because a pivot entry needs to be a non-zero entry, but there are no non-zero entries in the third row. So by the theorem, there is not always a solution to this matrix equation. For example, let's see if we can find a solution to this matrix equation where the vector b is 1, 0, 0. In order to do this, we will convert this into its augmented matrix. And let us row reduce again. So in the first step, we will get something like this. Let's divide everything by 2. And then multiply this by negative 1 and make it 0. Remember, the point is to first make b 0, then this one 0, so that we can make it into an echelon form. And so now this is an echelon form. But here is where we see the problem. If we write out the linear equation that this augmented matrix represents, the first row will give us x1 plus 3x2 plus 4x3 equals 1. The second row will give us 7x2 plus 5x3 equals 2. The last one will be 0 on this side equals 1. So when there is no solution, we say that the system is inconsistent. Notice that the last column is a pivot column. So in an augmented matrix, when the last column is a pivot column, then it is an inconsistent system. But this, the theorem is not saying that we can never solve the system. If there is not a pivot in each row, we may still be able to solve the matrix equation for some vector b. The theorem is saying that if there is a pivot in each column, then we can solve it for all possible b. But if not, we can still solve it for some particular choices of b. For instance, consider this matrix equation ax equals 0, 0, 0. So the vector b is 0, 0, 0. Well, we can always solve this in a very simple way. Just let x also be 0, 0, 0. Then 0 times the columns of a is simply all zeros. This is a special vector called the zero vector. And when there is a matrix equation where b is equal to 0, that also has a special name called the homogeneous equation which we will talk about in the next video.